John chapter 5 from verse 1 through 9. And after this was a feast of the Jews, and the Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And then there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, heart, weeded, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool to trouble the water. Whosoever that first after the troubling of the water, of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Let's read verse 5. And a certain man was there which had infirmity 30 and 80 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in the case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. And verse 9, And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Let's put verse 10 to 12 for proper clarity. And the, and the Jews said, unto him that was cured it was sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed he answered them he that made me whole said to me unto me take up thy bed and walk then they asked him what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk and his was healed which not was and jesus had conveyed himself away the multitude being in that place may the lord bless the reading of his word sit down your enemy's head balanciously without apology our anchor scripture is taken actually from the book of john chapter 5 from verse 1 through 13 and the topic today is the moving water in this very sermon i want to say this sermon is pregnant with a pregnancy of destiny I want to talk a little bit about destiny before I, I move on. So invariably, I um, will be dealing with destiny topic. But uh, for proper understanding, I want to talk about the moving water. But you need to understand I'm dealing with destiny. There are four things you need to fulfill destiny. Number one, I call it destiny decision. Number two, I call it focus in destiny. Number three, I call it destiny epas. Number four, discovering the prophecy about your destiny. Because what is not discovered cannot be recovered. If you have not got into a point where you begin to prosper and your prosperity intimidates the people who think they are there, can I prophesy? Some of you here, I prophetic statement. What do I mean by prophetic statement? God is about to use you to um, to yearize some people who are too proud. Somebody said, "Without me, you can't prosper." God said, I'm going to raise you up in their presence. You will prosper and prosper and prosper and prosper and prosper and they can do nothing. Genesis 31 verse 29. And Jacob answered and said unto Laban, because I was afraid for I said, but eventually thou wouldest take my, by force thy daughter from me. Okay. Now, before I go forward from there, after he spoke to them, Rachel stood up. I'm going to come there. After he spoke to them, Rachel stood up and told, uh, and told Jacob, I said, look, look, this is not something you should be talking about. Where you go is where we are going. Where you stay is where we stay. After all, all this property you have inherited from our father, 
our own, their own inheritance. We don't even care. We are not going to be married to our father. We are married to you. They both agreed in the emergency meeting they held in the forest. So Jacob packed everything he ever labored for. The cattle, sheep, cocks, hen, including the eggs. And when Laban came back home, Laban went all around and discovered that all the cattle are taken away, sheep, goats, animals, livestock. Well, he didn't bother him a little bit. He just said, okay, there's no problem. I can still, in two or three years' time, multiply them back. But what bothered him was that he now went to his temple to look at his temple. He discovered that his strange God was taken away. He said, What? If for anything I can allow Jacob to go, read the scripture. If for anything I can allow Jacob to go, but not my own gods. So he ran after them, pursued them. Three good days. You can imagine people that have left before you. The guy was on the speed to recover his God back. I'm going somewhere. I want you to underline that there was no place Jacob told his wives to follow him. They followed. To follow in life is a decision. All these men of God preaching messages, forcing people to obey them. They are jihadists. We are to preach and teach the word and the Holy Ghost is to convict you or convict you of what we say. We are not law enforcement agency. We interpret and know in part there is no part in the scripture where a man of God must force you to hear the word. It is up to you for you to hear. And there is no better teacher than the Holy Ghost. As I am teaching now, I am teaching in part. But the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. All things. All things. Including what I have not said in this sermon. As you follow me with the Holy Ghost, he will teach you. As he began to move very fast on his way, God appeared to Laban and said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the man you are pursuing now to kill. He said, <laughs> as for Jacob, he has an insurance in my insurance company that have protected him and the insurance is life insurance if you dare touch him i finish you 24 of genesis 31 for clarity and god came to laban the syrian in the dream by night and said unto him take it that thou speak not to jacob either good or bad my god god appeared and said to laban don't even bless Jacob. I don't need your blessing from your strange God. Neither you speak good or bad to Laban. That's to, to Jacob. There are some of you, you are looking for blessing from witch doctors. There are people that should not bless you in the name of Obatala. They are pouring libation. God said, keep your mouth shut. When you appear before Jacob, don't say, Jacob, why are you leaving you? I should have given me an honor to bless you. God said, I, I plant a coop for him to live because I don't want your dirty mouth from a dirty God blessing a sacred child. You cannot bless a man that God has blessed on his way to go and rescue his God. A living God, ha, Jehovah Elohim, appeared ha elohim appeared can i talk to somebody here i am tired of men of god that have become the of god that are serving a dead god they cannot hear the voice of god they cannot prophesy they cannot say don't say the lord they don't know anything about god they fight the prophetic a ministry because they cannot hear God. That a man of God asked the Bible and read the Bible. 
and interpret the Bible to you. It doesn't mean he hears from God. Because this is already a written word. It is called Logos. Can I talk to somebody here? So he can, everything he does, he has to open and read. Now God is saying that the latter kill it, but my spirit give it life. This man is still consulting letters. And God said, behind the letter, after the letter, there is a voice and not a noise. There is a difference between the word and the voice. Because the word of God is the written word. The voice of God, Mata, is God speaking and proving his infallibility, his immutability. Is God telling you, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whenever a man of God hears the voice of God, the word of God is activated. Whenever a man of God hears the voice of God, it authenticates the authenticity of the written word. Whenever a man of God hears the voice of God, he said, God, uh, your word is not an historical or a poetical book. God forbid that I stay under a man of God, that I become a meher, that I can't hear the voice of God, that I can't speak the voice of God, that attacks miracle, that attacks prophecy, that attacks deliverance in the name of foolish revelation. God is on a movement. Huh? He has left the idols. Stop tying yourself to tradition. God has left Songo. God, God is not in Obatala. There is a God that is a moving God. It's not a statue. You cannot carry my God and hide. We are, we are oracles. Oracles don't speak anyhow. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. I am not an entertainer. I am an oracle. Your decision can affect your destiny. Who you follow? You either follow a man of God or a man of God. You either follow an oracle of God or an obstacle of God. See that. Psalm 23 verse 5. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Is he in the presence of my friends? No. Is he in the presence of my friend? Ladies and gentlemen, you are not an apology. You don't apologize for who you are. Say, hey, he's showing up. I am not showing up. I have arrived. I am not an apology. Where were you when I was trekking from some water to agility? Where were you when I stayed in an uncompleted building for seven years? If my poverty is advertised, my prosperity should be advertised. And if you are not happy, up transformer and die. You say I will not marry. In your presence, I don't marry. You say I will not have a house. In your presence, I have a house. You said I will not go abroad. In your presence, I've gone abroad. You say my church will not grow. In your presence, my church has grown. You said I will die. In your presence, I have lived more than 25 years. You said I cannot make it. In your presence, I have made it. You are criticizing me. In your presence, I am was getting strong not in your back in your presence he said thou oh god prepare us a table he went to your destiny kitchen he went shopping he bought the Oriza Sativa. He bought the Licopasicum Escolanto. He called the Just Korea SPP. He went all around. He bought everything. After shopping, he entered the kitchen. He prepared food and called all your enemies to sit down and watch you while you are eating in their presence. Either they like it or not, you go chop that food for their presence. Those who say you cannot make it, my yanda hadayanda, shalaba in their presence my God shall prepare a table hey they are plotting to kill you in their presence in their presence you are changing clothes you are going from glory to glory from height to height you know why God prepared a table before you according to Psalm 23 verse 5 in the presence of your enemy so that after you have finished eating, they will pack the plate. Ah. Hey! Watch me as I break the bone with my premolar and molar. 
after I've descended on the food, I sit there and cross my leg. Enemy of progress, pack the plates. Backbiters, pack the plates. Magmiters, pack the plates. Evil pursuer, pack the plates. Enemy of destiny, pack the plates. I am made to sit and cross my leg. Hey! Now there was a Jerusalem by the sheep, market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Until the water of your destiny is teared, until it begins to move, nothing will move in your life. So each time the angel come, it troubles the water, the water moves. God said to me, there are certain things in your life that will not move until it is troubled. In this lake, great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, heart, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Why are they waiting? Because if the water will not move, problem will not move. If the water will not move, there will be no transportation from poverty to wealth. They were waiting for the movement of the water. Do you know some people are waiting for you to move? We are not in the days where heaven will come down. We are in the days where we will demand and move and heaven will react. If there is no reaction from earth, there will be no confirmation from heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, I will lose in heaven. The water was around. The water could wash the eyes of the blind man. The earth, the water could transport. The widow, the water could refresh. The important, the water could empower the seed for productivity. So they were around a place where their solution can come, but they were tied down. And the fifth person there was the man that was lame for 38 years. The guy was there incapacitated. There was no man among them to trouble the water. So I had to come down to trouble the water. When men refuse to pray, sometimes what they should have every day will become a Christmas bonus. Delayed, tied down. Some of you, yeah, you are by the church, but your life is tied down. Please don't surround yourself with people that cannot challenge your intellectual capacity and your destiny. Don't surround yourself with Mr. Nobodies. People that cannot even buy a recharge card for you, they are your friend. Anytime you see somebody with billions, you are, you are terrified. You need people that can shake your foundation. You need solid people, not a bunch of blind hearts without an impotent friend. Some of you are friends. All of you cannot help one another. That water there, I've refused to be steered by you. And I have suspended the angels. This is the last day. No more angel will come down. I am Emmanuel, God with us. I am the stream of living water. If anyone thirsts, let him come and drink. Because the water now is no longer a pool. The water is not a stagnant water. It's a moving water. The water is a personality. The water is the one standing before you. Because you have refused to go to the water. And the water has refused to come to you. I am Emmanuel. I am the water. I have come to you as the spring of living water. The water is standing by you. This is a spiritual water. By a physical water. Man, can you make a choice? Will you wait extra one year for a miracle? Or you want a miracle now? Because the water of the spring of life is by you. I am not here to ask you how long have you have been here. It can be 38 years. I am not an angel. I am God. I am God. Your problem does not need an angel. The water will not be stirred again because the water has come to you. And Jesus said, I am not the blind man. I am not the impotent folk. I am not the heart's generation. I am not the will that generation. I am the living God. 
I am not among those with deformities. Because if an helper must help you, he must not carry the characteristics of your condition. If an helper must help you, he must not carry the futures that you carry. You cannot be sick and help me. So I need, because the less is blessed by the great. And Jesus, the great God, the I am that I am, stood by him and said, I man, do you want to be made whole? And after that, he said, yes. 